Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Waynesville Goshen High School, where tonight in a key NWCC game, the Waynesville Goshen Tigers welcome in the Hard Northern Polar Bears. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Darren Gilbert and our entire WSN crew. And, Gilly, when you talk about two teams that want to establish the run, doesn't get any better than these two squads here. They both want to physically beat you up the line of scrimmage. Oh, yeah. You know, last year I had a chance to see them play up at uh, NOLA. Yeah. And they went at one another. I mean, keep a nail. Uh, the physicality on the line of scrimmage and with the back. You know, the back's running the football aggressively. You're not going to see a lot of passing tonight, uh, especially with, you know, Carson Barnes dinged up. Now, I may be surprised. We all may be surprised at Mr. Kaufman, the backup quarterback, but uh, it's going to be interesting because Hard Northern's got some dinged up players also. Absolutely. Hard Northern comes into this game 2-1. and one. They're uh, undefeated in the NWCC. This is a key game, Gilly, because Waynesville Goshen lost in triple overtime last week to Upper Side of Valley, so they're a game out of first place right well, now. Well, this is the one Waynesville Goshen, you know, has to have. Unfortunately, yeah, yes, right. you know, they've always played from being the uh, with the bullseye on their back this year. Now they're chasing the bullseye and they can ill afford to take a loss tonight. That'll put them two games back. Yeah, the Waynesville Goshen, the three-time NWCC champions. They are led by head coach Chris Summers, who took over for Travis Wireman last year, or this year, excuse me. Offensively, Waynesville comes into this averaging 41 points a game. And look, they lost Carson Barnes for this game, but Grant Bredigan and Gage Steineke, they're going to fill those roles admirably. They will. You know, they will. that's where Hard Northern is going to have to make the decision. Do you put eight in the box and try to attempt to stop the running game? and put it in the hands of Kaufman and make him throw the football. And, you know, on the other side of it, you know, you know, Waynesfield's allowed, uh, had the opportunity to score a lot of points. Hard Northern's going to have to buckle down, especially on a, a big crowd here at Waynesfield Goshen playing and on the road. Waynesfield Goshen will take the kick here in the first half. Hard Northern comes in, led by head coach Jerry Cooper, the legendary Northwest Ohio football coach. Been around for a while. He leads the Polar Bears in here. Ball's taken at the 25. It's brought up to the midfield, and that's where it will be taken down. Grant Bredigan with the carry on the play there. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from a jam-packed Waynesville Goshen Stadium. Tonight is youth night here, Gilly, and I, I, I go to work here every day, and these kids, there's 86 of the little girls junior cheerleaders here tonight. So uh, a great night for the youth sports. Well, they had that, and they also had the youth participating yes, in the right. band. Did a great <laughs> job, and the alma mater and the national anthem. So here goes Waynesville. They'll go first man up right through the middle, and a nice carry by Grant Bredigan. Grant Bredigan, the 5'9", 175-pound senior. 39 carries on the year for 210 yards. The Tigers will be led on the field by the quarterback, number zero, Jace Kaufman, 5'8", 150-pound senior. He's 10 of 20 for 250 yards and four touchdowns. The good thing about Jace is he has no interceptions, so he does a nice job of taking care of the ball. Yeah, that's what you're going to have to do tonight. You're not going to be able to have to put it on the, on the turf or in the air. Here goes the Tigers around midfield, and a nice run there by number 10 for the Tigers, Brady Miller with a nice run, and he brings it up to about the 43-yard line, and that is a Kenton Moose first down. Our first down sponsor tonight is Kenton Moose Family Center. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428. Kenton online at kentonmoose428.com. Hobson Stewart and also Caden Gwynn on the stop for the Polar Bears. Kaufman hands off the ball right up the middle. That's Grant Bredigan, and there is our – is that a flag or is that a ball marker they threw in there? See, that's where we got confused last week. Uh, yeah. It's orange. We, yeah. we, we brought that up because – The ball must have went on the ground. We talked about that last week, the same thing. 10.48 to go. I thought they'd have come up with a different color, <laughs> you know, like lime green or something like that, but no, they went with the orange. Oh, there's a false start. There's a false start. There's our first flag of the night. A handoff went to Gage Steinecke, but they'll bring that back. That'll go a false start on the Tigers. They'll bring up second in about 13. Yeah, that's the one the, the Bears needed right there because I tell you, Wainstein had been chunking yards off on the ground game. Hard Northern brought a nice crowd. Beautiful night for football, Gilly. Mid-70s, light breeze. This is what it's all about. Kaufman's going to keep the ball himself. He's looking downfield. He throws down the left side. He's got a man out there, and he overshoots his intended target, number 10, Brady Miller. 
Tell you what, he took a heck of a shot from Ken Frank, the inside linebacker. And that's what this Harden Northern defense is going to do. They're going to hit you. They're going to come oh, at you physical. hard. Look, you talk about it. Harden Northern offensively averages 30 a game. They only give up 22 a game. And Waynesfield averaging 41 a game. There's got to be somewhere in the middle these two teams meet. They know 40 and 22, that's a big difference. Yeah, it's a huge difference. You know, Harden Northern coming back with five three-year lettermen. A lot of experience. Coughlin's going to hand the ball off. He'll go left side. Gets around the 45 to the 40 to the 35. Up around the 30. And another Kenton Moose first down. Chased out of bounds by the far side boundary by number 10, Dylan Bacon. Gage Steinecke, the 5'8", 145-pound senior, scampers up the left side for another Tiger first down, and the Tigers are on the move with 10-15 to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, he ran away from Xander Wilson, just could not quite catch him. Eluded him enough to turn the corner and gain that extra 10 yards. There's another handoff to Bredigan up the middle, and he is pounding the middle of that line. Big offensive line for the Waynesville Goshen Tigers. Wyatt Poor on the stop for the Polar Bears. 6'5, 265 pound junior. Big fella. Eli Zeckman, Landon Porter, Brody Roberts, Troy Spencer, and Jace Turner up on the line for the Tigers. That'll bring up second and eight from the 30. Hoffman goes directly under center. He's got three backs in the backfield with him. And there goes another flag. And I think you're going to get movement again on that offensive line, Gilly. I think it was the left side. It moved early. Like and that's, you said. that's exactly what you're getting. Both they don't mess around. They snap no. the football. It's on, it's on one count, and it's the, they snap it. You're absolutely right. And talking with the kids this week at Waynesville Goshen, Coach Summers got after him, and he, he, he knows how important this game is after that lost upper side of the alley. So a crucial game for both these squads in the NWCC standings. So there's Kaufman under center. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll to the right side. He's under heavy pressure, and he, is, he eludes the runner. He gets across the field, and he gets taken down hard and a big-time shot there by number 11, Nolan Hobson, as he hits Jace Kaufman. And, boy, he flipped him upside down, oh Gilly. Oh, goodness. He hit, him, he hit him where he's supposed to, and that's shoulder pad square. And Dropped him right there on the spot. Yeah, the Bears had him in the backfield. They've got him behind the chains, Gilly, in third and 13. And a team like Waynesville doesn't pass a lot. This is a big time down at third and 13 from the 35. Kaufman will go under center. He's going to hand the ball off. This is Steinke. He goes on the left side. He's going to rumble for a gain of about four yards maybe. And let's see what the Tigers do here on fourth down. Bodie Hipscher on the stop. So the first big decision of the game, fourth and nine from the 35, and it looks like the Tigers are going to go for it as Coach Summers sends the play in. So a big-time play here with 8.27 to go in the first quarter. Tigers on the drive here, tied up at zero. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert from Waynesville Goshen High School. Kaufman will go under center. He's going to throw the ball. He looks downfield. He rolls to his right. He gets to the 45, to the 40. He's going to throw the ball, and he misses his receiver. His intended target was thrown to number nine, Tyler Wireman, the tight end, and that'll be a turnover on downs. Boy, I don't know how many more shots he could take. He just took a shot there from Sander Wilson. That's two big pops he's taken here early in this first quarter. Yeah, that's that's – Welcome to – <laughs> I know, right? Jace Coffin, a really good athlete. He's a 5'8", 150. Not a big kid, but he can really get away from pressure, as you saw right there. So the Polar Bears will take over on defense, or excuse me, on offense. They are led by number 14, quarterback Xander Wilson, 6'1", 190-pound senior. He's 9 of 22 this year for 163 yards and a touchdown, but he has, Gilly, are you ready for this? It's 415 yards on the ground. Young man can really get after it. Oh, they can run, you know, the tandem of him and, uh, Wilson. Wilson's going to hand the ball off to the right side. And Hobson, me. that's Hobson for a gain of about six yards. And there you see him carrying the pile there. Number 11, Nolan Hobson. Nolan Hobson, 5'9", 180-pound senior. And they put up almost 300 yards a game rushing, Gilly. That's their bread and butter. Troy Spencer on the stop. Troy Spencer, a fantastic inside linebacker for the Tigers. He's the leader of that defense. He likes to pop them when he can. Yeah, coming in with 14 tackles and one sack. Wilson will go into the shotgun. He's got a receiver to his left. He's got one to the right. 
He's going to go Hobson on the right side. Hobson goes across, and he picks up another Kenton Moose first down. So the Polar Bears pick up a first down as they're on the drive with 7.27 to go here in the first quarter. Brady Miller on the stop. You, you look at that NWCC standings, Gilly, and Elgin, Hard Northern, Ridgemont, and Upper Side of Valley all sitting pretty at 2-0. and oh. Waynesville Goshen 0-1 oh behind the rest of the pack. They win tonight. They're right back in this race. Absolutely. Hard Northern has to play Upper Side of Valley. Upper Side of Valley has to play Elgin. So it's anybody's league right now. Sure. I know Upper's got to travel to Hard Northern for that contest. Yeah, this is Xander Wilson. He's going to keep it himself. And a flag comes down, and that is usually in the area of holding. Yep. So that looks like, looks like it's going to be holding against the Polar Bears. That will push that ball back. No, do they say face mask? I believe they're saying that's a face mask penalty. That's the signal they gave was the face mask penalty. Hmm. I did not see that. I thought it was a hold. I didn't get to see the... I think the officials are the really confused about the... Yeah. <coughs> so they'll push the ball back. Yeah, we couldn't get the indication on the field, but it was against the Polar Bears and backs them up. Puts them, in, puts them behind the chains. It'll be yeah. first, yeah. First and long. First and long from the 42-yard line. Hard Northern comes in rushing, averaging 360 yards a game. They only pass for 54 yards a game, but my goodness, when you can bully teams at the line of scrimmage like they do, that's success right there. So Wilson is under center, and well, there's another flag. I think you're right. That appeared to be from the right defensive end position a little bit. So kind of a sloppy start here to this one with 636 to go. A little bit antsy. Yeah, flag is on the Waynesville Goshen Tigers. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Waynesville Goshen High School. Boy, you talk about a three-year run these Tigers have had, Gilly, the last three years. They have been fantastic, winning the conference, going to the playoffs. They've had, they've had some really nice teams. Yes, they have. And Coach Wireman, you know, you moved on to the line of Shawnee. Yeah. Doing a really good job there early in the season. There's Hobson as he gets around the right side. There goes Nolan Hobson up the sides, and he is gone for six. Nolan Hobson scores, wow. and the Bears take a 6-0 lead. Gilly, he broke containment, and he was gone. Well, not only did he do that, he was so going good with his feet, you know. Taking a couple steps, jabbing to the outside or cutting back to the inside, and just turned it into a foot race. And he went untouched right down that right side of the field. Nolan, Nolan yeah. Bench. Nolan Hobson shows you the speed and the athleticism of that young man and the toughness. He broke a couple tackles, Gilly, broke containment, and he was gone. So Hard Northern on for the extra point. And it's no secret, you know, you look at their offensive starters one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine seniors and Nolan Hobson will come on for the PAT kick or er, hold is good kick is up and it is no good okay, so, to the right so with 610 to go the Harden Northern Polar Bears take a 6-0 nothing lead you're watching high school football on WOSN Welcome back to Waynesville Goshen High School with 6.10 to go in the first quarter. The Harden Northern Polar Bears strike first, and they take a 6-0 lead on the back of Nolan Hobson, who scampers for about 50 yards down the field. He just beat everybody in the end zone, Gilly, in a nice touchdown run. Yeah, he once he got to the second level and then to that third level, the defensive backs just couldn't run him down. He's Great execution by the offensive line, opening holes, and, and a super job by Mr. Hobson weaving his way to pay dirt. So Nolan Hobson will kick deep, back deep for the Tigers. Grant Bredigan is on the left side. And looks like number 10 Brady Miller, excuse me, is on the right side. So 6 nothing with 6-10 to go here in the first quarter. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Waynesville Goshen High School in this key NWCC matchup on a beautiful football Friday night. 
and they'll receive the ball at about the 20 yard line. They'll bring it up. They'll come close to midfield, and he's through. He is going down the right side, and he is tackled at midfield. And a great run there by number 10, Brady Miller. Boy, he was one guy away well, from taking it to the yeah, house. And, and Dylan Bacon did all he could do to hang <laughs> on. He was falling backwards. What a great open field tackle by that young man. So he puts the Tigers, yeah. He doesn't yeah. get him. He doesn't get him. That's a touchdown for the Tigers. What a great response by the Tigers there as they bring it to midfield. Actually, it's at the 49, so they're in hard northern territory. Tigers got a strike back here with 6.02 to go, down 6 nothing. Let's see if Waynesfield can't get something on the ground early like they did the last possession. Coffin will go under center. He'll go Grant Bregan. Bregan goes up the right side, and he busts through some tackles. That kid is strong, Gilly. There you see the strength of Grant Bregan as he's busting up tackles all night. Poor and Sedlock on the stop for the Bears. And that is another Kenton Moose first down. With 5.43 to go on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard, 6-0 Harden Northern leads, but Waynesville on the drive here from the 40-yard line. Excuse me, they, they're going to say he was a yard short, so we'll go second and one from the 40. They'll go up the right side, and he's got one man to beat, and he's taken out of bounds, and that's number 10, Brady Miller. Boy, Brady Miller's showing you what a good athlete he is. He's really helping the Tigers get, out. Get your shoulder square to the line of scrimmage. You know, they see something from the press box. Obviously. Yeah, you're absolutely right, yeah. They're, they're seeing something that they can get a mismatch, and right now they're using that left side of the hard northern defense, the right side of the offense for Waynesfield, and they're getting the large yard. Excuse me, yard, large chunks of yards. <laughs> Good gravy. Hard Northern's going to take a timeout, Gilly. We'll take a timeout here in the booth with 5.22 to go. Hard Northern leads 6-0. Welcome back to Waynesville Goshen High School with 5.22 to go. The Harden Northern Polar Bears have come into Waynesville and taken a 6-0 lead early on the legs of Nolan Hobson. Gilly, we take a look at Waynesville's season so far. They had a big-time opener in Mississinawa Valley. They blew them out 36-12. Then they went to Crestline, beat them 49-12. And then last week, they lose to Upper Side of Valley in a triple overtime that the Tigers felt like they should have won that game. Yeah, that's one of those where, you know, a miscommunication right. or a misplay here and there to go back and get you, and that's exactly what happened there with the episode of Valley Rams, and I think that game was here, if I'm not it was. mistaken, right? It was, that's, yeah. That's a big win for the Rams well, on the road. Great win for the Rams. There's Bredigan as he goes up the middle, and he is tossed down by big number 58 for the Bears. Excuse me, number 60. Yeah, Caleb Emrine. Caleb Emrine, yeah. Number 52, Caden Wynn. That'll bring up second and nine from the 27. Boy, when they get to the line, Gilly, they come right at you. There's no hesitation. Jace Kaufman does a great job of running this offense, and the Tigers are churning up yards right here. They'll go Gage Steinecke on the left side. Steinecke's trying to break off to that boundary off the left side. He gets past the yard marker, and he's taken out of bounds for another Kenton Moose first down. There you see the speed of Gage Steinecke, the 5'8", 145-pound senior. Yeah, because I thought Nolan Hobson had a beat on him there, and he just outran him to the sideline, and once he got his shoulder square, he took, you know, again, and got large yards you know, down the field, and... Pushed out of bounds by Mason Stewart. Mason Stewart right now, if you've got your safety, you know, leading you in tackles, that's not a that's good thing. That's not a good thing, no, that's right. The, um, the Waynesfield offensive line is doing a great job of finding space right now. There's Bredigan up the middle, and he squeezes through. He goes towards the end zone, and he's going to fall just short of the end zone. What a nice move by Grant Bredigan as he spins and tries to get into the end zone. Yeah, went in between the A gap between that center and guard. Again, number one, Mason Stewart saving the touchdown. Gilly, dare I say, we're seeing some of the best backs in the area tonight from oh. both these teams. I'm telling you, Grant Bredigan, Gage Steinecke, and Nolan Hobson, three of the best backs in the area. They yep. can get after it. Well, don't discount Wilson. He yeah, can, Xander he Wilson, can, you're right. He can do it too. <laughs> So here come the Tigers with 4.09 to go. They'll go Bredigan again. He's trying to get to the goal line, and he is tackled by a host of polar bears, and he's about the two-yard line, Gilly. Win. Wilson coming up off the pile. Tough yards. Four. They're going to mark it at about the three-yard line. 
you know, right now, Waynesfield controlling the line of scrimmage. Got just enough for the first down. He did. Another Kenton Moose first down. Kenton Moose is our sponsor tonight. Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 and Kenton online at KentonMoose428.com. So Trenton Ferreira brings the play in for the Tigers. First and goal at the three, partner. So here come the Tigers. They'll line up. They've got two in the backfield behind Kaufman. They'll go Bredigan right up the middle, and he did not get in. He is as close as you can get, Gilly. The uh, linesman is coming over and marking it right about the goal line. That'll bring up first and goal. The big fella, Mr. Poor, got his huge arms around him and just <laughs> slowed him down. Brody Roberts in the middle of that uh, pile there trying to push back. And what a battle it is between the defensive line from Harden Northern and the Waynesville Goshen offensive line. You got to believe they're going to run it four times here, Kelly. You have to. <laughs> you know, he just got two yards right there. They'll go Kaufman right under center. He's got Bredigan right behind him. They're going to counter play. Oh, what and a play. My goodness, what a play. Brady Miller was stuffed in the backfield. Xander Wilson. Xander Wilson knew that was coming. That's that's good defense right there, Joe. Sure is. That's a loss of four. That's a big loss of four. So there we go, third and goal. And the Harden Northern defense has stiffened up here with 2.31 to go in the first quarter. They lead 6 nothing, And the Tigers trying to match their score right here. Let's see if they don't try to pop it to the outside versus going inside. Coffin's going to throw the ball. He's looking to throw it. He goes right side. He's trying to get it in there, and he gets it in. Touchdown, Tigers. Jace Kaufman on a four-yard run, and I really like that offensive call there, Gilly. They gave Jace Kaufman options. They gave him an opportunity, yeah. yeah, and he did a good job. He didn't mess around and dance. He dropped the shoulder and said, you know what, I'm coming. Get ready. Jace Kaufman with a four-yard scamper, and the Tigers have tied it up at six apiece with 2.12 to go in the first quarter. I just like the fact that they put him out on the boundary, and he can make his own decision, and he's athletic enough that he can pick up the yardage. Absolutely. So the Tigers are going for two here with 2.12 to go. He protected the football. He you know, covered it up and did a good job getting to that line. Kaufman under center. He's going to go right to Brady Miller, and Brady Miller is short. And the two yard, or excuse me, the two point conversion is no good. So with 2.12 to go in the first quarter, the Waynesville Goshen Tigers have knotted it up at six. You're watching high school football on WOS Sand. We're back here at Waynesville Goshen High School with 2.12 to go in the first quarter. The Tigers have tied up the Harden Northern Polar Bears six apiece on the Lee's Famous Recipe scoreboard. And Gilly, this is going to be like a heavyweight fight. They're just lining up at the line of scrimmage and who's tougher right now, and we're tied at six. Yeah, and if you're a coach, whether it be in the press box or on the sidelines, you know what the key is, whether you're wearing down, those hands start going on the hips. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And it's going to, it's going to play a factor because it, it was a humid day. I was going to say, it's a, it's a nice uh, hot night here tonight here at Waynesville Goshen. And a lot of these kids playing Division Seven football are going to play both ways. You don't have the luxury of going to platoon. So we will get our kick here. Number 52 for the Tigers, that's Troy Spencer. He will kick the ball off and a squibbler down the right side and it's fielded on the left side, excuse me. And this is number one for the Bears, Mason Stewart. And he will be taken down right around the 35 yard line, 36 yard line. And that's where the Polar Bears will take over. So their first possession, Gilly, they really got after it and you saw Nolan Hobson speed down the right side as they took an early 6-0 lead. Let's see if the Tiger defense can stiffen up here and get the ball back. Tyler Weirman there on the stop for the Tigers on that kickoff return. Hard Northern this year started out with a loss to Arlington, 53-33, then they bounced back. They've won two in a row. They beat North Baltimore, 30-13, and then they shut Corey Rawson out, 29-0. Look, I don't care what level you're at or who you're playing. When you shut somebody out for an entire game, that's quality defense. Yeah, you've done, well, you've done game planning. And, Absolutely. And great preparation. Here's Wilson. He throws back to Hobson. Hobson comes back, and there's a flag back there, and that's right in the area of holding. So we'll see what the call is, but and that is exactly what it is. So that'll move the polar bears back. And Good that's eye, partner. Yeah, Good eye. that's got to make Jerry Cooper unhappy 
because you're really putting yourself in a hole right there on the first play from scrimmage. Join myself, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlock each week as we break down local football matchups, talk Buckeye football, and discuss sports throughout Ohio. It's the Three Wise Men podcast on WOSN. Not a comment from you about the name Three Wise Men. I I, I saw that smirk. I could say three knuckleheads. You, you, I was going to say you, three musketeers. But you know you'll be on that podcast here oh, soon. Oh, boy. <laughs> so here come the polar bears. Xander Wilson's under center. He's got a man in motion. He's got two to the left. He throws to the left. He's got Hobson out there, and what a great, great job. job by Stretching the Tigers. Yeah, they stretched it out, and the Tigers come up, and big number 54, Brody Roberts with the tackle. Boy, both these Redding teams. also on there, in their partner on the stop. You know, that, that, uh, that hold is huge. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it yeah. really backed them up. Well, now, yeah, now we're sitting second and 20. You know, now Coach Cooper's got to go to a different, you know, plan in the playbook. So Xander Wilson will go under center. He's got two receivers to his left. He's got Hobson in the backfield with him. He'll take the snap. He's going to roll. He looks down the field. He's under heavy pressure. He rolls to the right. He's looking downfield. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be taken down. Oh, what a play. Gage Steinecke comes out from the defensive backfield and takes down the quarterback and a big loss for the Harden Northern Polar Bears. Yeah, that's one of those where Mr. Steinecke and we've saw – We've seen in previous plays what he's capable of doing with them legs and how quick he is. And he just ran Wilson down. Well, Gilly, when you put a team like Hard Northern or Waynesville Goshen at third and 16, that they don't pass the ball a lot. So it really puts them at a disadvantage. And here we are, third and 26 from the 26-yard line. you got to believe they're going to be conservative here and, 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 you know, just take the punt. Well, you know, it's going to change your philosophy on defense, too. You can be a little more aggressive. Yeah, so here's Wilson. He's looking to throw the ball down the field. He's going to throw far down the right side. He's got a man out there, oh. and a nice job by the defensive back. That is number nine on the coverage. Tyler Wireman gets his hand up there. That's exactly how you play the ball, well, I'll tell you what, that was a beautifully thrown ball. That was a really nice thrown ball, but Tyler sure Wireman did, ran played, right it, with him. played it exactly the way you're supposed to play it. So that'll bring up fourth and 19, and that'll put Xander Wilson back in punt formation. Yeah, what Hard Northern doesn't want to do is give them short field. Because when you give them short field, we've seen what they're capable of doing, that being the Tigers. So here's Wilson with the punt, and Jace Kaufman back deep. He's going to let that bounce, and it'll go out of bounds, and they will mark it out of bounds at about the 37-yard line where the Tigers will take over. So a nice defensive stance there by the Tigers as they hold hard Northern. And, boy, you're, Gilly, you said it best. That first penalty play really pushed them back, and then they get a second penalty on the same drive. Really, really well, hampered the drive. That was huge. Yeah. You know, that, that was from the spot of the foul, and that really, you know, put them behind the eight ball, and they just couldn't recover in that series. So with 35 seconds to go here in the first quarter, we're all nodded at six. The Tigers will take over. And looks like they're marking the ball. They at they, the 30. Yeah, mark. I was gonna say they had it at the 35, but the officials got together and they said that it went out of bounds at the 30. So a good job by that crew of coming together and making sure the right spot was approached. Full house on tap tonight here. It's youth sports night here at Waynesville Goshen, and there is a ton of people here. Coffin will go under center. He's going to hand the ball off. It's the first man through. He goes to the middle. This is Grant Bredigan, and he is, oh, my goodness, Gilly. He had one man to beat, and he was gone, but he picks up another Kenton Moose first down. Well, and the leading tackler for the Bears on the safety spot, Mason Stewart. But you're seeing that Waynesfield Goshen offensive line really Dominate flex. Dominate the line of yeah, scrimmage right now. absolutely are flex in their muscles, and they are getting chunk yardage. And that may be the last play of the first quarter here as Dylan. the clock's down to 10 seconds. Yeah, Dylan Baker, or Bacon, excuse me, was also in on the stop. And Which, like you said, they're getting huge chunks. And that'll do it for one quarter of play for Waynesville Goshen High School. It's 6-6. We're all knotted up. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert will be back for second quarter action right after these messages.
Batesville Goshen High School for the start of the second quarter. We're all knotted up at six. Danny over Darren Gilbert in this big time NWCC battle. As we mentioned before, Harden Northern still undefeated in league play. Waynesfield one game behind the leaders. So a huge game for the Tigers. And just like we thought, Gilly, it's 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 tough man contest right now. It's, it's the battle at the line of the screen. Pound. Yeah, it's it sure is. Pound. Coffin's going to hand the ball off. This is Brady Miller. He goes off the right side, and Brady Miller picks up a good chunk of yardage, six yards there. And my goodness, Brady Miller is uh, is having a nice game, Gilly. <laughs> he's doing he's doing just like the teammates are doing, and that's getting yards chunks. If you give teams five and six yards at a crack on first down, that really puts your defense in a precarious position right there. Caden Gwynn got him by the ankles, but not until he got about six yards on that yeah, that'll First bring down second and four from the 49. Kaufman will go under center. He's going to hand the ball to Bredigan. Bredigan goes through the line, and he picks up another. Kenton moves first down. And Grant Bredigan, boy, you see the burst right there, Gilly. He's not only tough, he's fast. Well, the second break, I don't know if they even ruled him down. Did they rule him down? He, when he jumped up, I think the officials you know, made the motion that he was down. Okay. Uh, but uh, they, they kept the ball right there at the 41-yard line. Pretty heady play on that young man's part. Play that'll, through the whistle. Absolutely. That'll bring up first and 10 from the 41-yard line. Coffin will go under center. He's got two backs behind him. He's going to hand the ball off to, to Gage Steinecke. And Gage Steinecke is thrown out of bounds. And a nice tackle there by Dylan Bacon. Boy, Dylan Bacon having himself a night, and he I don't is. know, and I don't know if that's a good thing, Dil Gilly, from his position. Well, him and who was the other one, Mason Stewart? When your two leading tacklers are from the third level, and the other one is your second level linebacker. Uh, trying to remember who that was, Hobson. You know, that really puts your defense in a bad position. So Coffin hands the ball to Bredigan. Bredigan goes right through the middle. Grant Bredigan has been the workhorse tonight. As we talked earlier in the broadcast, Carson Barnes, the six foot 195 senior, uh, who has 343 yards for a 7.6 yard per average. He's got six touchdowns. And I'll tell you, I said that I did not feel that these backs would uh, take a back seat to anybody. And they're doing a great job of filling in for Carson Barnes. Yes, they are. Hobson and Gwynn on the stop right there. You know, it makes you wonder just how much Cruz Curtis yeah, plays, yeah, you, plays you, into the part, you know. Yeah, he plays absolutely. a wing back on the offense and linebacker on defense. Nice play there, Mike Gwynn. Wow. Brady Miller taken down. Nice tackle there. Gwynn and Wilson appeared to be on the stop. Good job closing on the football. Caden Gwynn really came up and popped him down low, and he took him down hard. Nice tackle there by the young polar bear. Hard Northern, boy, you know, we, we talk about Waynesville Goshen really winning the line of scrimmage right now, but these hard Northern kids, there's no quitting them. They're, oh, they're, no. they're really coming at it. Coach Cooper's has a nice job with this defensive front. And they've got them right where they want them in second and long. Now they got to keep them, you know, make it third and long, make it at least four yards on a third down situation. Bregan carries the ball again. Went on the stop again. It's going to bring up third down. That's, if you're hard northern, that's what you want. Now, obviously, I think this is a two-down territory for Waynesfield, but it's still a third and four yeah, situation. It is third and four from the 24. You got to believe it's two two carries to get four or to get uh, the four yards they need here. So Coffin will go under center. He's going to hand the ball to Bredigan. Bredigan sneaks through there, and he got close to a first down, Gilly. I don't know if he got it, but he got real close to it. Yes, yeah, Xander Wilson also with Caden Gwynn tripped him up. And they're going to say he is short, Gilly. It is okay. fourth and in inches, or are they going to measure? Yeah, they're going to take a uh, official's timeout, and the officials are getting together here. Let's see what they determine. The one official, sees, they're doing the eyeball test right now, Gilly. Let's see what they call. Yeah, they're going to say, no, he started to give the first down uh, signal, but they're going to measure. Looks like they're going to measure here. That'll bring up fourth down and just inches, Gilly. Yeah, we're in no hurry. You know <laughs> no, what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because if you don't measure that, one coach is going to be happy and the other <laughs> one's going to be very upset. Oh. 
Coach Chris Summers, uh, first year here at Waynesville Goshen, doing a great job with the Tigers. And, of course, Jerry Cooper, uh, who's been around for a long, long time, has done a great job every stop he's ever made. And that is a first down. That is a Kenton Moose first down. So great job officiating there by the officials. They got together. They did not want to eyeball it because it was that close. We said it was inches, and we were exactly right. 9.20 to go. That'll bring up first and 10 for the Tigers as they're on the march again. 6-6 six, six here, all knotted up. Kaufman will go under center. He's got three backs behind him. He's going to hand it to Bredigan. Bredigan tries to go off the right side, and he is going to be gang tackled by a host of polar bears. Not much of a gain, if any, there, Gilly, as they hit him right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, somebody had him by the ankles. Oh, it's number 52. Yeah. Caden Gwynn. Boy, we've called him a lot tonight, we have. too. Caden Gwynn has played a really nice game. Three-year letterman. That's exactly what we expected, Gilly. We expected a hard-nosed fight from both these squads, and that's exactly what we're getting is a fist fight right here on the football field with 8.39 to go, all knotted at six. Kaufman will go under center. He's got Bredigan right behind him. He's going to hand the ball off to the second man through as he tries to get around the left side. And he is taken down, but a nice job by Gage Steinecke. Gage Steinecke and Dylan Bacon met head to head, and boy, that was a collision. Yeah, Dylan Bacon felt that one. He's right now. Yeah, he is, appears to be a little woozy. He's struggling right now, trying to catch his breath. But that was a collision on both their parts. But that's going to bring up a third and one from the 10-yard line. So here's the situation, Gilly. The Tigers have a chance to punch or to get a first down and go first and goal and uh, four shots at the end zone. Kaufman yeah. will go under center. He's got Bredigan right behind him. He's going to hand to Steinke up the middle, and wow. I don't know if he got it. That hard northern defense stiffened up, and we're going to have to wait for a, an official's call here. Big play there by the... Caden Gwynn and River Gwynn. It is going to bring up a fourth down. Gilly, I, I'm always a fan of fourth and inches of not handing the ball off and having my quarterback just sneak the ball. I, I, I really like that. I don't think there's near the confusion, and it's just mano y mano. And I'm not questioning Coach Summers here at all or Coach Cooper. You may just, be surprised. You yeah. may see this right here. Yeah. Here we go, fourth and one from the 10-yard line. Good job by Hart Northern, though. Coffin under center. He's going to hand the ball to Bredigan. And uh -oh. I don't know if he got it, Gilly. My goodness, I don't know. This is going to be real close. Hard Northern thinks that they have stopped him, and I don't disagree with him. If he got it, he got it by the nose of the ball. This is going to be really close. Yeah, the big fella, Wyatt Poor, did a great job filling that hole right there along with Bodie Hipsher. If it is, he's going to, he's got to make it just by – Oh, it, oh, they yeah. did. They, they, they held didn't him. Even, they didn't, they even, didn't even measure, measure hard northern with the turn with the uh, turnover on downs, and the polar bears defense with a huge stop with 7:04 to go. Gilly, Xander Wilson will go under. He's got a man down. Yeah, uh, I think one. that's Dylan Bacon. Yeah, he was struggling after the last play. We're gonna let them tend to him. We'll step aside. You're watching high school football on WOSN. The hard northern polar bear that is walking off the field is Dylan Bacon. And, Gilly, we both said the play before, you could tell he was woozy and he was hurting, and uh, he went down. And uh, great job by the trainers to come out to tend to him. And let's just hope that young man is okay. That's a big loss for that defense. That is a big loss for the defense. Now they're down two starters. But give the kid a lot of credit. He tried to play through it. It happened a couple of plays prior. He tried to gut it out, and he just uh, – his body had enough, and he's over on the sideline. He did walk off under his own power, which is a good sign. So the Bears will take over first and 10 from the 11. Xander Wilson is in the gun. He's going to keep it himself as he rolls to the left side, tries to break containment. He is hit hard by that Waynesfield defense. My goodness, a big-time stop. And if I could get a number, and that is Troy Spencer. Boy, that, he really yeah, had Troy Spencer okay. came out of nowhere, and he really laid the wood to Xander Wilson. Boy, both of these defenses are really mm. aggressive, Gilly. They just get after it. Yeah, they pin your ears back and they come after you. That's for sure. 
Well, we knew the game would go pretty fast, basically because both teams keep the ball on the ground and it keeps the clock running. That'll bring up second and 11 from the 10 yard line. Wilson will go under center. He's got Hobson in the backfield with him. They've got one in the slot position. They go to the left side and pick up a gain of about three yards. And that is number 22 for the Bears, I believe. Breading him on the stop. Cam Frank, is that who you're thinking had the football? Yeah, that's 22? who I, 22, that's who I thought it was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I was trying to find his number, and they had him behind another number here. So we're not NBC Sports. <laughs> Here come the Polar Bears, third and six from the 15. Big third down play for the Tiger defense. They're going to keep it, run it right up the middle. And a nice job of getting through the initial play, but a great job by the Tigers. I don't think he's there, but he's less within a yard, I would think. There you saw number 54, Brody Roberts, come up. He's assisted by Layden Porter. Boy, they really gang tackle there. And it's going to bring up fourth and one from the 15-yard line. Coach Cooper, he's, he's, he's talking about he it. He sure is thinking about it, isn't he? Clock continues to run, 5.01 and counting. We're under five minutes now. Might yeah. see a timeout here. I was going to say, they're looking at the play clock here uh, to see, you know, make a decision here. And I think that's what they're going to, Coach Cooper is talking to one of his players on the sideline and see what kind of decision they make here. And that's what they do. They take a timeout. There's a timeout on the field. We'll take a timeout here in the booth. You're watching High School Football on WSN. Welcome back to Waynesville Goshen High School with 4.28 to go. The Harden Northern Polar Bears have a fourth and one from the 20-yard line. Gilly, I'm looking around the stadium, and this is absolutely the best. Look look at the people along the fence row and everybody having a great time and watching a great high school football. These, these two communities have come together, and uh, what, what a fun night for high school football sure in Northwest is. Ohio. This is what it's all about. It, it sure is. Division 7 <laughs> football at its best. Absolutely. So here goes the Polar Bears, Gilly. They're going to go for it on fourth and one from their own 20-yard line. They'll quarterback sneak it, and the play was blown dead. The timeout, I think. And, yeah. I think Waynesfield took a timeout. Waynesfield did take a timeout. So uh, a nice call there by Coach Chris Summers as the Tigers – take a timeout to try to stop the fourth and one effort. Gilly, we saw uh, you and I have done some uh, really good games this year, and you know, we were we were over at St. Mary's two weeks ago, and both of us thought that uh, St. Mary's would run the table with that offense they've got, and boy, what an upset win for the Defiance Bulldogs last week over the St. Mary's Rough Riders. Well, you know, St. Mary's unfortunately got a running back they did. up, and yeah. I'm not taking anything away no, from no, Defiance, no, no, no. because They've got one of the premier linebackers in Northwest Ohio, and I, his name slips my mind, but <laughs> we seen him last year, I believe me and you did. Yeah. And he's just, he's one of those that would just wreak havoc on an offense, whether it be throwing or running the football. But, you know, it appears, you know, Crosby, I think the kid's name is a game time decision for St. Mary's tonight. And the last score we got reported is 7-7 seven to seven with yeah, Wapak. What a great so, game that is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's a nice – or what's that, Route 33? Yeah, Mark Shine on the call for that game. So the, Oh, yeah, he was talking about eating food. <laughs> Here come the Bears at fourth and one from the 20. And they are under center. And they'll go quarterback sneak again. And it looks like they got it. But here comes a flag in from the back judge. This is going to be interesting, Gilly, to see what the call is. On fourth and one from the 20. Oh, he's calling it on Harden. He's Northern. calling it on Harden Northern. I'm wondering if he's calling it for the extra push. He's, that's exactly what he's calling it on, and that's going to back Harden Northern up, and Coach Cooper is livid on that sideline. And there goes another flag, and I think you're going to get a 
somebody sideline warning somebody, maybe no no yeah, no 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 somebody going back to the huddle did not yeah somebody said like something the call and voice their displeasure loud enough that the uh the head man out there on the field heard it so they are explaining the call to Waynesville coach Chris Summers and they are backing up the polar bears backed up almost to the goal line there at about the six yard line and Xander Wilson will punt from the end zone and back deep for the Tigers. And I say deep at the 40-yard line is Jace Kaufman. Boy, Gilly, if Jace Kaufman can get some running room, he's going to give the Tigers incredible field position. And there's the kick, and they're trying to stay away from Kaufman. Kaufman's trying to run the ball down, and he's going to let it bounce, and it's still going to be a fantastic field position for the Tigers at about the 43-yard line. Yeah, and that, you know what, well, give credit to... Sander Wilson, you know what? He didn't kick the ball directly like you said to the receiving team. Good job punting the ball. I don't know how much better he could have done that from the end zone. Gilly, that's a great point. He just really helped hard Northern out of the bunt. He was deep in the end zone, and that's a nice 45-yard kick. Sure was. That young man is a heck of an athlete, Xander Wilson. We're seeing a Oh, he's very, a man on the yes. basketball court, too, oh, yeah, he's in his best sports, baseball. <laughs> Well, he's putting you know, on he's yeah. a South Pole and he can he can bring it. Yeah, he's putting on a show right now for the Polar Bears. So here come the Tigers as they'll go with one receiver far right. And they've got number 12, T Trenton Ferulia, lined up on the left side. And they'll hand the ball off. Here goes Gage Steinecke trying to get around the boundary. And he oh, fumbles boy, the ball. Fumble. The ball's on the turf. And it is recovered. And it looks like it's recovered by Layden Porter. Layden Porter saves the day for, for the Tigers. He, he sure was did. Johnny on the spot. Well, give Xander Wilson credit. He had bit a couple times. He committed too quick to the inside. And they bounced it outside. He made sure that he turned that thing back in and met that running back. And boy, made a jarring enough hit to put the football on the ground and Gwen was very close to getting it. Gilly, Gage Steinecke is a really quick back and the hardened northern defensive ends are Strung doing a nice out. job of stringing it out and staying at and home. And the linebackers also. A fantastic job. What a game we've got right now with 324 to go. Kaufman under center. He's going to go Bredigan. Bredigan goes up the middle and he is hit hard and it gets about a gain of maybe two to three yards. And the Tigers playing a little conservative here with 3.12 to go, all knotted at six. Don't forget, Gilly, that Harden Northern gets the ball coming out of the locker room. So a big drive right here for the Tigers. Yeah, this is a big drive for the Tigers and also a big stop, you know, for the Polar Bears. Bodie Hipsher on the stop this last possession along with Xander Wilson. I knew we'd have a tight game, mm -hmm. Gilly. This is, this is what it's all about. I, this is super fun. Yep. Now, this is where your hours of preparation and <laughs> yeah. breaking down in practice on the little things and going over details and scouting reports. And then you, you execute the game plan on Friday night. Both teams right now are doing that. Heck of a chess match. Yeah, that'll bring up third and 15, but the Tigers are going to take a timeout. We're going to take a timeout here in the booth with 2.30 to go until halftime. We're all not at six. We're back here at Waynesville Goshen High School with two minutes and 30 seconds to go until halftime. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert in this key NWCC matchup between the Harden Northern Polar Bears and the home standing Waynesville Tigers. Waynesville on the move here as they've got the ball third and 15 on the 49 yard line. Kaufman's going to go under center. He's going to keep it himself. He's looking downfield. He's going to throw down the left side, and he misses his intended target as he was trying for Trenton Ferrilia, the 6'2 freshman on the Post play there. Cam Frank with great pressure. The six foot, 195 pound senior was bearing down on. So a great quarterback. Yeah, great defensive stance here by Harden Northern as Waynesville Goshen. Really not a, really not a choice here. You're going to have to punt the ball with 2:24 to go, and the dangerous Nolan Hobson is deep for the Polar Bears. So Kaufman is in punt formation. And he gets a high spiral, and Hobson's got a chance to return this one as he gets it at the 30. And he's taken down, and a beautiful tackle there by number 56, Layden Porter, as the big man gets down the field and makes a fantastic tackle. Yes, yeah, solo tackle to boot. So here we go with 2.16 to go. Harden Northern first and 10 with a chance to break the tie here right before halftime. 
each team with one timeout left here in this second quarter. Gilly, the uh, sun's going down quicker each night. It is going down quicker. You know, each cold, night. <laughs> cold weather is right oh, around don't the corner. Say that. <laughs> Xander Wilson will go under center. He's got Nolan Hobson off to his left. He's got one in the slot position. He's going to keep it himself as he rolls around the left side, and he picks up some uh, – no, he's taken down. Boy, he had me fooled. I thought the ball carrier was in front of the play. Good job closing in by the Tigers right there. And a great job there by the Waynesville defensive line as they hold him to no gain there. And the clock continues to run with 154. Two schools of thought here, Gilly. You want to try to get something before halftime, but you want to be a little conservative because you're backed up, and you don't, you don't want to give Waynesville another crack at the ball. Right, and I think that's why you're going to see Coach Cooper, you know, try to run a couple plays to see what he can get. Then you may just see him try to milk the clock as much as he can, forcing Waynesville to make a decision. Do you take the burn the last time out or just play – to zero, zero, zero on There's the clock. Wilson as he's in, and the ball is up, and I don't know if, if he, you know, they're going to say it's an incomplete pass. Xander Wilson went to throw the ball, and he was hit by a couple of Tigers, and the ball popped up in the air. It almost looked like he did not bring his hand forward, uh, and I believe that's what the coaching staff, and there's a penalty flag thrown, and one of the hard northern – Oh, they're going to call they're gonna say grounding. They're going to say intentional grounding on Xander Wilson. That's going to be a loss of down. And that's going to back up the Polar Bears even farther. Yeah, and Coach Cooper right now is giving it to the one official on yeah, the far sideline. Really fired up. I think their question is, was Cam Frank out here in the vicinity of football? And it appeared he was. I was going to say, I'm going to be honest with you, Gilly. It looked like he had an intended receiver out there. And I think the officials are getting together. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if they don't make the change here. They don't here. pick it up. Yeah. And let's see what they do if they wave this off. And that's exactly what they're doing. Nice call, partner. Thank you. <laughs> you too. <laughs> nice call. And I think they got together. I don't think the official who threw the flag had the vantage point to make Give the call. Give them credit. Yeah. And they, they, this officiating crew has been spectacular yes. tonight. Yep. They've gotten together. They've made the right calls. And that's what it's hey, all they're, about. They're human. They're going to make mistakes. But you know what? The mistakes they're making, they're trying to get together and correct it and do, do the right thing. Yep, that's going to bring get up peace to fish eight. third and 10 from the 23. Wilson will go under center. He's got Nolan Hobson directly behind him, and we're going to get a timeout. Hard Northern's going to take a timeout with 1.22 to go. We'll step aside. We'll have further action right after these messages. Back here at Waynesville Goshen High School, 122 to go. All knotted at six. Third and ten from the 23-yard line. Game of field position. It partner. is a game. You're, you're exactly. I was going to say Whoever that. Whoever gets the short field has a huge, huge advantage. You're absolutely right. So Wilson will go under center. He's got Nolan Hobson directly behind him. He's got two receivers, one to the left, one to the right. He's going to go Nolan Hobson as he goes up the middle and a carry of about three yards, and that's going to keep the clock running. It'll bring up fourth down. And Jace Turner on the stop. Yeah, the Tigers going to take a shot. They're going to burn that last time out. Yeah, and I, and I think that's a good move, Gilly, for the Tigers there, uh, trying to get the ball back and make something happen. Look, Short this, field maybe? Th this is going to be a game of who has the ball last maybe, and you're exactly right. Short field is what you're looking for, and uh, nobody's flinched yet. What a great game we've seen, not at a six here. Yep, absolutely. Looking at Carson Barnes down on the sideline. He's got a sling on the right shoulder. Gilly, I talked to Carson today. What a great kid and a great ambassador for Waynesville Goshen. These kids, uh, you know, they, they want to see him play. And uh, I think it's, you know, it's the right move to keep him out. He's got a shoulder separation of some type. He showed me an x-ray today, and he's hoping to be back next week. But uh, we'll see. He's a, he's a great football player and a great kid. Yeah, it's unfortunate it happened to be, what, his throwing shoulder. And, yeah. You know, and, you know, same thing with Cruz Curtis. He's in a sling for hard northern two-way player for them and a vital part of their success. And, uh, you know, him being dinged up, Hopefully we can get him back in there. So fourth and four. Here come the Polar Bears. Wonder if they're just going to try to draw him offside or they're going to run a play here as they'll go under center. Nolan Hobson goes off, and that's exactly what they're going to do, Gilly. They're going to try to get a hard count here and pull him off sides. Waynesville Goshen not moving. 
And, and there's the flinch there. Or there's the uh, delay a game. Yeah, that's the delay a game. Yeah, I was yeah, say you know what? And and that's that's if you're Coach Cooper, that's a great move. Oh, absolutely. Four. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you draw them off, you get an automatic first down. So a chess match here between Coach Chris Summers and Coach Jerry Cooper, as we're knotted at six. Fourth well, both coaches, partners, been doing it a long, long time. Absolutely. So Xander Wilson will go back in punt formation, and they're putting Grant Bredigan back on the right side with Jace Kaufman. So they're going to have to punt to one of them, and they'll go Bredigan on the right side, and they kick it away from him. A Nicely nice shot. done. I'll tell you what, Xander Wilson has done a fantastic – he's been a weapon. He real, I mean, from the punting position, he's been an absolute weapon for the hard Northern Polar Bears. Yep, ask him to punt the football, ask him to play defense, ask him to play quarterback. Well, the Tigers put two men back so they could keep the ball from going out, and what's Xander Wilson do? He says, you know what I'll do? I'll show you exactly how to do it. <laughs> So a great job there. We'll get a leg into it, and we'll play it along this, you know, the boundary. You love to see two good football teams go at it, and that's exactly what we have here tonight. So with 109 to go, let's see what the Tigers do. First and 10 from the 42. Kaufman calls him to the huddle. He'll go directly under center. He's got Grant Bregan right behind him. He's going to keep it himself. He's going to roll. He's looking down the left side. He's going to keep it. He's at the 45, oh, to the 50, to the 45. Back. He's at the 40. Jace Kaufman scampers to the 30. And you're right, Gilly, that's going to come back because that's in the position of holding where the flag was thrown. And that's going to negate a great play by Jace Kaufman as the senior quarterback scampered down the sideline, and they're bringing it back. Yeah, that's a tough one to bring back if you're the home team Tigers. That's going to negate a big, big game. And plus, from where the foul was committed, that's going to be huge. Yeah, that's going to back Waynesfoot up. A big time move here as the hold was not real sure where the hold was on the offensive line. But they'll bring him back with 58 seconds to go. Kaufman will call him to the ball. Danny Hilbert, Darren Gilbert from Waynesville Goshen High School, a jam-packed Waynesville Goshen. It's youth sports night. Lots of moms and dads and grandmas and grandpas. There's a nice run there up the left side for a gain of about four yards, and that is Gage Steinecke. Hipsher and poor on the stop for the Bears. Clock will run. We're down to 30 seconds here. And this should be the last play of the half. Let's see what the Tigers do here with 20 seconds to go. And Kaufman will not hand the ball if he's going to roll. He's under heavy pressure. He goes to the right side looking for anybody, and he is going to be taken down. And that will be the last play of the half. So after one half of play, the Harden Northern Polar Bears, the Waynesville Goshen Tigers, are knotted at six. We'll be back with second half action right after these messages. We're back here at halftime as the Waynesville Goshen Tigers and the Harden Northern Polar Bears are all knotted at six after one half of play. Both teams trying to establish the run, Gilly, and, and you look at Harden Northern, they came out like gangbusters. Nolan Hobson in the first quarter scampers 50 yards for a touchdown, and they really stalled after that. Waynesfield answered, but both defenses have really stiffened up, and that's the name of the game right well, now. Well, it's been a tale of, you know, two quarters for both teams, and Probably the biggest thing that the coaches are disappointed in is the, the, the flags that they've the committed. Penalty, yeah, yeah. The penalties has really hindered both ball clubs and their ability to get any form of a sustained drive together. And I'm sure that was probably a topic of discussion by both coaches. You know, you clean up the penalties, you know, and not get backed up and, and get a couple sustained drives. But I think you're going to see, you know, both teams try to loosen up and they're going to have to throw the football. My, my honest opinion, uh, 
it's going to be one of those where it's going to be least expected and it's going to be called at a uh, very uh, uh, unfamiliar yeah, yeah, time. Yeah, 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 I agree, yeah. You know, when you get when you get the defense on their heels and try to strike that way, but yeah, it's been it's been a very uh, hard fought game, especially through the line of scrimmage, but I think the penalties again is has hampered both ball clubs from sustaining anything uh, on a regular basis. So Harden Northern will get the second half kickoff as we saw Waynesville Goshen take the first half kickoff. And we are just about underway. Troy Spencer will tee it up. And we are underway. Oh, and his squib kick down the middle of the field. And Harden Northern grabs it at about the 39-yard line. They're going to get excellent field position. And I think maybe Waynesville was hoping that that would maybe bounce off one of the up men or something. Yeah, you know, Caden Gwynn did a really good job of just pouncing on the football. And one of the things fundamentally that I watched was another teammate jump on top of Gwynn to make sure that ball didn't score it out. Nice fundamental play there by the Polar Bears and the senior Gwynn. So Xander Wilson will come back out at quarterback, the 6'1", 190-pound senior. Done a nice job of directing the Polar Bear offense. They've got one tail back behind him. That's Nolan Hobson. They've got a split wide out on the right side. They'll go Hobson up the middle. He is met in the hole by Troy Spencer. I'm telling you what, Gilly, you can't play a better rushing defense than Troy Spencer from his inside linebacker position. He met him in the hole and drove him back. Well, we also heard the pads crack, too which means that's a solid fundamental play. <laughs> and, yeah, he stood him up, and he went nowhere. They're going to give him a yard, but that was definitely a hard-earned yard there. Spencer doing a good job filling that hole and meeting the running back and standing him up. So we're second and nine from the 40. Nolan Hobson is the lone back behind Xander Wilson. They've got a ride. They got a receiver to the left. They're going to pitch back to Hobson. Hobson looking for running room, and he squirts through for a nice gain of about five yards. So Nolan Hobson, who was stopped in the backfield, he, he uh, kind of jitterbugs his way up through the middle and gets five yards. Gilly. Yeah, he planted that outside foot and cut it back. And Mr. Roberts, with a defensive stop right there, got him by the ankles, or he could have split that and been off to the races. It's going to bring up third and four from the 45-yard line. We're all knotted at six here from Waynesville Goshen High School. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert for this big-time NWCC matchup. Wilson's in the gun. He's going to go back to Hobson, and Hobson is taken down. Not much of a gain there at all, but gang tackling by the Tigers as they meet him in the middle, and that's going to bring up fourth and about four yards, Gilly. Redigan on the stop right there with a host of his teammates. Yeah, he tried to bounce it outside, and... Planted the outside foot and cut back, and he's going to be about two yards short. Here's the Bears are going to go for it. Fourth and two from the 47, and the Bears are going to go for it. Xander Wilson will go under center. He's got a wide receiver to the left, one far right. He's got Nolan Hobson behind him. He's going to go Hobson in the middle, and I don't think he got it. I know he didn't get it. What an effort by the Tigers as they get the ball back on a turnover on downs. Yeah, they sent everybody right there. And Nothing was there for either Hobson or Wilson to pull it out of the gut and keep it. They You're, just they didn't go anywhere. Gilly, they put 11 in the box, and <laughs> it wasn't hard to figure out. And I, and I kid, of course, they had a wide out on the, on the far left side, but they had nine guys in the box, and they really loaded it up. They did. They loaded it up, and the Polar Bears could not go anywhere. They got no push at the offensive line, and – it's awful hard to block, you know, block 11 when you got five offensive linemen there. And good job by Waynesfield. So Jace Coppin will go under center. He's going to hand the ball off. This is Steinke. He tries to get to the left side. Gage Steinke, and he twists and turns, and he picks up maybe two yards. Gage Steinke, the little scat back who has uh, picked up quite a few yards this uh, game. Uh, what? That's a great combination with him and and, uh, and Grant. Uh, Bredigan, you know, a little thunder and lightning there. Oh, with, without Carson Barnes in the game, they're doing a great job. Yeah, and Harden Northern's doing a much better job containing that perimeter. They are, you're right. You know, Robson right, or excuse me, Hobson, along with uh, Cam Frank. They'll pitch back to Bredigan. Bredigan goes right side. He gets up the yards, and there goes Grant Bredigan. He is gone. Grant Bredigan with the touchdown. What a run by the senior tailback as he takes it into the end zone from about 48 yards out the tigers take 
the 12 6 lead. Boy, he put it in second gear and then third gear and fourth gear, and nobody was going to catch him. He busted a few tackles, and he gets the touchdown. And the Tigers take the 12 6 lead. That's exactly what Waynesfield Goshen was hoping for. Get that young man on track. Well, they got him to the third level, and it was an absolute foot race for about five yards. I know it's good to see Dylan Bacon back into the game, but he just could not get a hand on him, and he outran him to the end zone for the touchdown. So the Tigers will go for two here with 9.18 to go here in the third quarter. Coffin's going to keep it himself. He's looking to throw. He throws to the corner of the end zone, and he overshoots his intended receiver, and his intended receiver was number 11, Reed Waitman, the 5'10 junior, and he just misses him. So with 9.18 to go here in the third quarter, the Waynesville Goshen Tigers have taken a 12-6 lead. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Our scoreboard sponsor tonight is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delvis, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. And our first down sponsor is the Kenton Moose. The Kenton Moose is Hardin County's home for great food, fellowship, and friends. That's the Kenton Moose 428 in Kenton, online at Kenton Moose. 428.com. So there you see the speed and power of Grant Bredigan. He's been threatening to bust them open all night, and he really got some nice box on the right side of that line, and he takes it into the end zone. Yeah, they give him a hole. He doesn't have to have a big one because he's no. a doggone <laughs> quick. He is. And he can slice and dice his way through there, and that's exactly what he did. Once he, again, once he got past second level into third level, he just went to a different gear, and nobody in the visiting white uniforms could run him down. So Troy Spencer will kick off to the Polar Bears with 9.18 to go, and he'll squib it right down the middle of the field, and it's going to go out of bounds on the right side, and the official throws the flag. I think that's of what comes to the 35, or is it 45? I cannot remember. It comes up to the 35. Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Or is it the 45? I thought it was the 35. Or they get a chance. Are they going to re-kick it? Oh, Coach Cooper wants to re-kick. They want to re-kick it, okay. So they'll back it up and re-kick it. He wants, uh, you know, I, I, I don't blame him. I, I, anytime you can get the ball in Xander Wilson's hand or Nolan Hobson's hand, you've got a chance to get some really good field position. And I think that's what Coach Cooper's thinking. That's what he's thinking. That's exactly right. He's got confidence in his ball club to execute on special teams. You want to talk about a chess match between two really good coaches, Kelly? We, mm -hmm. We're getting everything tonight. We're getting physical play. We're getting, you know, guys smashing each other at the line. We're getting really good coaching from both these squads well, tonight. I think they both know, as well as the kids, the importance of this game. Absolutely. So here goes Troy Spencer as he kicks it again. And he'll go on the other side of the field. And, yeah, this is Xander Wilson picks it up. He goes to the middle of the field. He's looking for a block, and Xander Wilson is going to be taken down at about the 35-yard line. Nice run back by the young man. And that's where the Polar Bears will take over down 6 nothing. We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku and Apple TV. Jaden oh. Porter right there, partner. Excuse me. No, you're Stop. fine. So the Bears are down 12-6, trying to answer the Tigers on their first possession this second half. This is Hard Northern's second possession. So Xander Wilson will go under center. He's going to go Nolan Hobson right up the middle, and Hobson busted out to the left side. Here goes Nolan Hobson for a nice pickup, and he's going to pick up a Kenton Moose first down, a gain of about 12 yard lines. Boy, when he gets out of containment, Gilly, he's really something special. He is special, isn't he? Nice open field tackle there by Tyler Wireman. Both these squads have so many really good athletes that can just go to the house at any time, and, and we're seeing a full display here. But really, both of them are coached well defensively. They are. They are, and they, they do the fundamental things, especially in the open field on tackling. Here goes Hobson again as he goes up the middle, and the Tigers are saying not this time and not much gain at all, and it looks like maybe a loss of a yard. A great job by the interior defensive line for the Tigers as Brody Roberts, Zeckman, Porter, Roberts, Spencer, and Turner all in the middle there. They're all doing a great job tonight. 
And you saw Eli Zekman looking at his teammates saying, let's go, fellas, let's, let's hit somebody. Yeah, you got to like the enthusiasm displayed on both sides by both ball clubs. So here's Xander Wilson. He'll go under center. He'll pitch back to Nolan Hobson. Hobson cuts it back to the middle, and he squirts through. There goes Nolan Hobson down the left side. He's got one man to beat. He's going to cut it down to the middle, and he cuts it back, and he's into the end zone. Nolan Hobson from 50 yards out, and the UC – what a run by that young man, and we're all knotted at 12. Boy, oh boy, when he broke at first level and broke those two tackles, you know, he made it a foot race with, uh, appeared to be Tyler Wireman, and he juked him, got by him, and found his way to the goal line. Well, we talked about the game earlier last week. Uh, we talked about it today with Upper Side of Alley and the triple overtime. So Waynesville's been in these dog fights before. You know, and, and they're probably thinking, here we go again. <laughs> yeah, here we go. So Nolan Hobson will try to put the Bears on top with the point after try with 7.49 to go. And Xander Wilson will hold. The snap is back. The kick is up. And it is good. So with 7.49 to go in the third quarter, the Harden Northern Polar Bears lead the Waynesville Goshen Tigers 13 to 12. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Back here at Waynesville Goshen High School with 7.49 to go in the third quarter. The Harden Northern Polar Bears take a 13 to 12 lead on the strength of a Nolan Hobson touchdown. And Gilly, he just showed you why he's one of the best running backs in the area. What a fantastic job by that young man. Well, like you said, we've seen a lot of good running backs here tonight. They're all explosive, in a, and they do it in a variety of different ways. Heck of a ball game. How big is that extra <laughs> point right oh, there? Oh, that's huge. Waynesville Goshen typically doesn't kick the extra point. They always go for two. And uh, right now, they've missed both of their two-point attempts. So we'll see what happens here with 7.49 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Waynesville Goshen High School. And our Northern kicks another squib kick there. And that's going to give Waynesville a really good field position. Gilly, I don't know if you noticed that, but did you see some of the kids sliding out there? The dew is coming out on the ground. And you just wonder at this uh, wet surface is going to play havoc for both of these teams. Yeah, as the game goes on, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what it does for the footing. And what kind of respect does both coaches have in their kicking game as far as kicking off to their opponents? You know, the speed of the kick returners. Right. So they'll go Grant Bredigan up the middle. And uh, right now it's a heavyweight fight between Nolan Hobson and Grant Bredigan, the two tailbacks for both schools, doing a fantastic job for their respective schools. Brody Hipsher on the stop. Well, you've called that name a lot tonight, Brody yes. Hipsher. He's had a nice football game. Six foot three, 255 pound tight end, defensive end. Kaufman will hand the ball off. This is number 10 on the right side. Brady Miller with a nice run. And we haven't seen much of Brady Miller since the first half, and he had a really nice first half. But there you see Brody Miller, or excuse me, Brady Miller picks up a Kenton Moose first down. Got up ahead of steam, didn't he? He did. He absolutely did. Again, they're attacking that left side of Hard Northern, the right side of Wayne's Field Goshen. They're seeing something there that they can try to exploit. So Kaufman will go under center. They'll go quick to the ball. They'll pitch it back. Here goes Bredigan on their left side. He tries to get around the boundary. He cuts back in, and he is nice taken stop. down. And, boy, you're going to see a flag yeah, there. I think yeah. they, they got a late hit. Xander Wilson came in late, and uh, they made helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact, and that's going to be called every time, and that's going to be a big 15-yard penalty. Yeah, you know, Gwen, Caden Gwen did a really good job getting that fundamental tackle right there, and, Unfortunately, one of his teammates happened to fall on top of the pile. Boy, that was a vicious hit there as those two uh, collided. And uh, they're going to walk that off. That's a personal foul against Harden Northern. Yeah, it wasn't on the initial tackle. It was on a teammate coming in afterwards. That's a big one. That's 15 sure yards. Is. 
and, and I don't know that it was intentional. It was no, just a, I don't it, think yeah, it was an aggressive was, play. No, it was late, and he was trying. He thought that he was trying to take him down. So uh, first and ten from the twenty-five. Coffin will go under center. He's going to go. Brett, Bredigan right up the middle. Grant Bredigan is. He's rolling over top of people. And does he get in? Yes, Grant yes, Bredigan. Did. You want to talk about running like you're mad. Grant Bredigan with the big time run as he rolled over two hard northern polar bears. And the Waynesville Goshen Tigers take the lead again. Yeah, he did not try to run around them. He went through them and got through both of them. 18, right up that yeah. A gap, right up the A gap between the center and the left guard. That'll make it 18 to 13 on the Lee's famous recipe scoreboard. Tigers will go for two with 6.32 to go. And partner, we got a shootout. We knew that we were going to see something like this. There goes Kaufman. He's going to pitch it back to Bredigan. Bredigan's running off the right side, and he gets in for the two-point conversion. So Grant Bredigan is putting the Tigers on his back, and he's saying, come on, boys, let's take this one home with 6.32 to go. Tigers lead 20-13. Back here at Waynesville Goshen High School with 6.32 to go. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert. Gilly, we saw six points respectively from both squads in the first half. And here we are now at 20 to 13. The touchdowns are piling up, and we're getting the full display of these running backs. Well, I'm telling you, you know, hard northern answer. And then lo and behold, here comes Waynesville Goshen. It was like a carbon copy. You know, they squipped the ball into the ground, both teams. And, you know, the big personal foul give them an extra 15 yards right there, that being the polar bears, you know, committing that, basically piling on or late hit, but I don't think it would have made a difference. That young man just got up ahead of Steen, breading yeah. him, and he found his way to the end zone. Here's Xander Wilson as he gets the ball and he goes to about the, I'll call it the 36 yard line. So Xander Wilson doing it all for the polar bears tonight. He and Nolan Hobson, one, two punch. And it is 2013 with 627 to go. Layden Porter there for the stop for the Tigers. A lot of time left, partner. A lot of time. Yeah, there sure is. And uh, this is the type of game where you look, both teams, neither team will pass the ball much. So a two score game seems like eternity here. So this is a big defensive possession for Waynesfield and a bigger offensive possession for the Polar Bears. You know, why pass the thing if you're if you're chunking yards and both teams are doing that right now? So Xander Wilson will go under center. He's got Nolan Hobson directly behind him. He's got a receiver to the right, one to the far left. He's got a man in motion. He's going to keep it himself. Xander Wilson goes off the left side and not much doing there as he pushes the pile forward and gets a gain of about two yards. Boy, he got more than what you thought, partner. Yeah, he he, I was going to say, six, boy. Didn't he? Yeah, and it looked like he was stopped in the backfield, and they just kept coming, and the officials have given him a nice spot. You're right. That's about a five-yard gain. Yeah, he was churning them legs, and good job by that young man with second effort, not going down, willing himself to get that extra yardage. That's big for them. That'll bring up second and five from the 40. Clock continues to run, 5.48. Xander Wilson will go under center. He's got Nolan Hobson directly. He's got two receivers to the left, and he's got a man in motion. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be taken down in the backfield, and that's a loss of about three yards. So the yardage he picked up the play before, the Tigers push him back, and that's going to put him in a third down situation. Oh, what a big play there by number 56, Layden Porter, the five foot eight, 205 pound defensive lineman, a senior. Good job right there. Shedding the block, making his presence felt in the backfield. Youth sports night here at Waynesville Goshen, so a huge crowd on hand. We had a ton of cheerleaders and ton of band members, oh. and they, they really showed up to support their community night. Good for them. So here goes the Polar Bears, third and seven from the 37. Wilson's going to go under center. He's going to go Nolan Hobson right up the middle, and he just runs over people, and he's still going, and he picks up another Kenton Moose first down. Nolan Hobson got hit at the line of scrimmage, Gilly, kept on going, and shed it about two or three tackles. Is it me, or is it the game is very similar this on is a, both yeah. sides? They are just either running around people or running through people. Yeah, it's a carbon copy. It is a carbon copy. 
Now we're starting to see the hands on the hips. Yeah, you're seeing you're seeing guys get a little tired. Guys that are going both ways. We knew it was going to play a part in it. You know, the nice thing is it has cooled down some. Yeah, you're right. Absolutely it has. So Wilson's under center. He pitches back to Hobson. Hobson stutter steps a little bit, and he gets a gain of about two yards. Great job on that defensive side of the ball. Stringing by the, it out. Yeah, they strung it out. The defensive ends for the Tigers cleaned it up. It's going to bring up. Porter, Porter also on the stop. They'll call it second and nine from the 47 with four minutes to go. Clock continues to run. Tigers lead 20-13 over Hard Northern. Well, you know, you look at both these squads, Hard Northern averages 30.6 a game and Waynesfield 41 a game. And here we are at 20 to 13 in the third quarter, at the end of the third quarter. So defensive football has been the name of the game tonight. It's been the big play. You know, they sure. haven't scored on short yardage. It seems to be the big play that both teams have run off. This is Hobson again right up the middle, and he gets a gain of about three yards. That'll bring up a manageable third and about five. Here to be Bredigan on the stop along with his teammate Brody Roberts. And we've got an injury on the field. Makes you wonder and if it's not a cramp. Yeah, it looks like that's what it may be. But they'll tend to him. We'll step aside with 3.14 to go. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. Welcome back to Waynesville Goshen High School. The injured Tiger was Layden Porter, and he is walking off on his own. He looks like he's in good shape, Billy. Take a look, see what he's going to do here. Looks like he's going to tape up that leg, and we thought it was a cramp at first, but it uh, looks like he's putting a little tape on that knee, and he's doing it himself, so I think he's going to be all right. Yeah, give him a little extra support. Yeah, he's ready to go back in. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing he did, look at the coaches and said, get me in there, coach. i like to see that. So here we go, 3.14 to go in the third quarter. Third and six from the 44. Wilson goes under center. He's going to keep it himself as he tries to get around. And what a stop. What a stop there. Jace Kaufman comes up and really put his head down and a made, a, on him, made a big time tackle. And that's going to bring up fourth and six from the 44. Boy, you saw Kaufman coming up from the safety position and made a fantastic play. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Xander Wilson is not an easy tackle. Oh, we got a flag. And we got a flag on the play, and it's side a sideline side warning. warning. And he's telling the coaches to stay back. Boy, that could have been disaster, Gilly. Yeah, I think the defensive coordinator got a little excited right there. The nice did. thing is, okay, that's the second time yeah. is when the yardage gets marked. It's a warning on the first one. So Wilson's in the shotgun on fourth and six. He's going to roll to his left, looking downfield. He throws the strike, and he misses the receiver, and it's going to be a turnover on downs. So Xander Wilson rolls out of the pocket, and he misses his intended target, and the Tigers will take over at the 44-yard line. Yeah, this is where Hard Northern's got to get a stop. They can ill afford to give up points here. Are you surprised they threw the ball there, Gilly, with fourth and six, the way they've ran the ball? No, not really, because, you know, we talked about that at halftime. There's going to be opportunities where you're going to get behind the chains and you're going to have to throw the football. And, you know, fourth and six, I think Coach Cooper thought he could get his receivers out into the areas where the quarterback could get it to him. Unfortunately, Mr. Wilson couldn't on that particular play. So Coffin will hand off to Graham Bredigan as he goes up the middle, and he is pushed back. And I think they're going to mark it about a yard gain as his forward progress went across the line of scrimmage, and he was pushed back by Harden Northern, but they're going to give him the yard. That'll bring up second and nine from the 45-yard line, 2.12 to go. Clock continues to run. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Waynesville Goshen High School. Waynesville Goshen with already one league loss in the NWC. Hard Northern still undefeated. Uh, this is a big time matchup, Gilly, as far as uh, the standings in the league. Yes, it is. I mean, it's going to come down to let's see what we got here. And there's a flag on the play. And that's going to go against false Waynesville start. Goshen. Yeah, I believe it's a false start against well, Waynesville actually, Goshen. Actually, they called him off. Uh, they called him. Uh, they called it. Uh, Apparently somebody had their head over the football. They caught him off sides. 
<laughs> so one of the Waynesfield offensive linemen appeared to be. Yeah, we look at the NWC standings and Elgin, Hard Northern Ridgemont, and Upper Santa Valley all 2-0 and in the league. Waynesville Goshen 0-1. and So really, if Waynesville Goshen can get this win over Hard Northern, it puts them right back in there. And it doesn't take Hard Northern out of the race. Uh, but boy, if Hard Northern can get this win, it can really help their cause. Absolutely. They'll pitch it back to Bredigan. He tries to get around the left side, and he gets a leg. It's a first down, and there's a flag coming in late. Not real sure what that's about, but my goodness, that flag came in really late, and they're going to say it was a hold against the Tigers. Boy, that play was – Is that was, what it was, yeah. partner, or was it a legal block in the back? Yeah, is that what it was? Okay. Yeah, you're right. I think that was on Gwynn. Gwynn yeah. went a flying across the field, number 52. You're exactly right. It looked like he was giving the holding signal, but you're right. It is a block in the back, and it'll go against Waynesville Goshen, 125 to go here in the third quarter. And that's tough right there because I'll tell you what, they got a huge gain on that run right there. And those are one of those misfortunes that as a coach, you know, you often wonder why the play is flagged when the ball's already beyond where the flag is thrown. Boy, that looked like a busted play as Jace Kaufman went to pitch the ball back and there was nobody there. And now Flags we've got a galore. late flag coming in. Oh, and Harden got Northern, Harden Harden Northern, Northern got came out of the, the pile. And the official said Harden Northern's got it. The official just gave the signal that Harden Northern gets the turnover. And, the, and it is a holding call, so a double whammy against the Tigers. Yes, and it's declined. Yeah, and it's declined. Harden Northern's going to take over from about the 40-yard line. So a big-time break for the Polar Bears and a big mistake by the Tigers there as the ball hits the ground and Hard Northern will take over. Yeah, our first turnover in the night, partner. Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. River Gwynn coming up with that loose football, number 73. So the clock at 109 here in the third quarter, first and 10 from the 40-yard line. Hard Northern down 20 to 13. It's been a back and forth battle this whole game as we've traded leads throughout the night. Wilson goes, yeah, Wilson goes under center. He's going to go Hobson right up the middle. Hobson cuts it back, and he's taken down. And a nice tackle there in the middle of the defensive line for the Tigers. Yeah, that was Bredigan getting him by the ankles. Giving two on that one, partner. Second and a long eight under a minute to go here in the third quarter. Second and eight from the 38. This might be the drive of the game, Gilly, for both these squads as the third quarter comes to an end. Wilson will go under center. He's got Nolan Hobson just off to his left shoulder. He's got a man in the slot. He's got two receivers far right wide. They'll go, he's gonna go to the first man up and a nice run there. Big run by there Cameron by Frank, number 22. Cam Frank. Cam Frank with a nice run there. And I'm not sure if he got the first down or if he came close to the first down. Let's see what they call it. They're gonna call it third down and about one. And that'll be the last play of the third quarter. So after three quarters of play from Waynesville Goshen High School, the Waynesville Goshen Tigers lead the Hard Northern Polar Bears 20 to 13. Stick around for fourth quarter action. We got a dandy. Back here at Waynesville Goshen High School for the start of the fourth quarter as Waynesville Goshen continues to lead 20 to 13. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert. And what a game we've had, Gilly. And now we've got a turnover here by the Tigers. Hard Northern driving their third and one at the 31-yard line. Yeah, they, they put the ball on the turf, and the visitors came away with it. Like I said, River Gwynn came up with that football. Let's see what the visitors can do here as we start the fourth and final quarter. So Wilson will go under center. He'll keep it himself as he goes off the right side. And he goes to the middle, and a big gain. The ball's on the turf, and it's picked up by the Tigers. That ball, are they going to say it was down, or what are they going to call? The official says, not real sure what the call is. I think they're going to keep it hard northern ball. Let's see. Uh, the officials are coming together, and we're going to get a big cut. They're going to say, and they're pointing towards Waynesville. Waynesville Goshen with the turnover. So back-to-back -back turnovers, Gilly. 
And the officials got together, and they determined that the ball was out before he hit the ground. Well, give them guys credit. You know, whenever yeah. there's a question mark, they always get together and talk about it. They have done a great job. And with 11.54 to go, you're – you're sure that the Waynesville faithful would love to see the Tigers go on about an 11-minute drive here and seal the deal on this one. Yeah, that's a tough break because that was Xander's biggest run of the night. Bredigan goes up the middle, and, boy, he got popped immediately. Man, Kelly, I don't remember a game with this much hard hitting from both these squads in a long time. I mean, the physicality of this game is outstanding. Yeah. What's that expression? You take a licking and kick and chicken? Because I'm telling you, they're laying the wood to one another. Yes, they are. That appeared to be Hobson coming in there with a host of his polar bear teammates. Coffin will go under center, and the officials, and they're going to take a timeout. With 11.19 to go in this contest, the Tigers take a timeout. We'll be back right after these messages. We're back here at Waynesville Goshen High School where the Tigers lead the visiting Hard Northern Polar Bears 20 to 13. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert on a beautiful Friday evening here. Ohio High School football doesn't get much better than this. We are in a old fashioned slobber knocker here in this one. Here goes uh, the Tigers, they'll hand the ball off and they try to go around oh, the right boy. side. And it looked like maybe one of the hard face Northern mask. grabbed the face mask and it is a personal foul. And that's gonna push the ball up 15 yards and another mistake there. Boy, that's gonna hurt the hard Northern Polar Bears. They'll push that one up 15. Yeah, I don't know if that was on, it appeared to be either 14 Wilson or 73 River Gwynn. They just got a little bit too close to the head area and the officials right there so bounced on it and saw a face mask. That's a big one. That's 15 yards and automatic first down. They'll walk that one to the 35. It'll be first and 10 from the 35 and the clock continues to run. We're at 11 10 to go in the fourth quarter. Tigers lead 20 13 over Harden Northern. Hoffman runs him up to the line. They'll go quick count like they've been doing all game long. They'll go Bredigan off the left side, and he pulls ahead for a gain of about four yards. Grant Bredigan has ran hard all night long. Brody Hipscher on the stop. Five big yards right there. If you're the Polar Bears, you cannot let them get that four to six range on first down. That'll bring up second and five from the 40. Let's see how big that timeout is Waynesfield had to use. Yes, yeah. Coffin's going to give the ball to Bredigan, and he is hit immediately. That was a really big play. Let's take a look and see who's coming off the bottom. Is that River Gwynn? Hard Northern. Oh, he's got the football. They come also. up with the football. Uh, are they going to say they're going to say the ball was down? And boy, I bet <laughs> they are fighting for that ball in those piles. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what, River, River's got a nose for the he football. He does. He absolutely does. Kid's only a sophomore, too, partner. Look, I, I don't, I don't. You know, we don't have a dog in the fight here. But, but regardless of win or loss, both these teams are really good football teams. Absolutely, I mean, you, you can see it in both these teams. They're going to make a difference in the NWCC here. Well, you better be prepared. I think you got a false start. And we do have a false start on the Tigers. Waynesville Goshen, another false start. That'll back it up five yards. I mean, we've really, we really haven't seen the pass defense of either ball club, but their run defense is, you know, with yeah. the exception of the big play. That's what the game's been tonight is the big play. Yeah, we saw Tyler Wireman for the Tigers make a big time play on the left side of the field uh, when Harden Northern threw in about 40 yards and Tyler Wireman sure. made a really nice play. So uh, that's about the only pass defense we've seen tonight. But here goes Jace Coffin. He rolls out to the right side. He's looking down the field and he's got a man oh, out there. Good. Nice he throw. throws a strike. And the reception made by Tyler Wireman. I was just talking about him. And here comes a flag in from the back judge. Let's see what we got here. Do we have a man downfield, a lineman? 
We're going to see, but an excellent play by the Tigers. And let's see what they're calling here. But uh, we're seeing a lot of laundry on the field here, Gilly. And these officials are getting together. Let them talk that out. You can join myself, Miles Holiday, and Nate Garlic each week as we break down local football matchups, talk Buckeye football, and discuss sports throughout Ohio. It's the Three Wise Men podcast on WOSN. So they're taking their time here trying to figure this one out. We've talked about these officials all night, how they've gotten together and they've made the right call when they've had to make the call. So let's see what they decide here. That flag come in from back behind the play, Gilly. You just wonder what the back judge saw. Well, you know, and that was after... A block in the back okay. by the Tigers and a block in offsetting penalties? Is that what they're calling? They're calling offsetting penalties. So, okay. okay. I'm as confused as anybody in the crowd here, Well, Billy. I think one, one player did it on one team and then sure. turned around somebody else on the other team did it. I don't think it was the same players. I think it was... No, that'll replay. Affected four players. Yeah, yeah, that's a big one there for Waynesfield. That'll replay the down, third and 11. So with 8.43 to go, Tigers lead 2013. They'll hurry to the line. Coffin's going to take the ball. He's going to roll. He's looking down. He throws it backside, and Bredigan, he was intended target for Grant. Bredigan, they had the screen they set, up, set up. Billy. They yes, had it set they up. Did. A nice conceived play, but it goes awry as it goes off the fingertips of Grant Bredigan. It's going to bring up fourth and 11. This is a big time play here, and it looks like Jace Coffin is going to go back in pump formation. And Hard Northern will send Nolan Hobson back. And boy, this, this is a dangerous situation. If you punt to Nolan Hobson, he is dangerous every time he touches the ball, and he's going to get an opportunity, Gilly. It's going to, well, he's going to let it bounce in front of him because they're going to get excellent field position, and it'll go to the 40 yard line. That's where the Polar Bears will take over with 8.24 to go. You got to wonder, Gilly, if this is Hard Northern's last gasp here with 8.24 to go. Unless it comes down to a turnover, you know, they can force a turnover, but yeah. This is one of those where you dig deep into the playbook and you start picking high percentage plays that you've been successful with tonight, make the defense beat you. That being hard northern on the offensive side of the ball and making Waynesfield do something defensively. So here we go, partner. 8.24 to go. Waynesfield leads 2013. Wilson will go under center. He'll fake the handoff. He's going to keep it himself as he rolls to the left side. He goes back to the middle, and here comes another flag. And I think this is all for naught because I think you're going to get a holding call against the Polar Bears where the flag was thrown. Coach Cooper not happy with that call, but it is holding against the Polar Bears. And boy, we've seen a lot of mental mistakes here in the second half, Gilly. It was a really clean game in the first half, but you can tell when guys are getting tired. You really can. Well, and fatigue plays a huge factor into it. You know, the easy thing to do is start using your hands instead of playing with your feet. Now, that's a big one in basketball. When you get tired, you want to play with your hands, and the officials are going to catch you. Same thing here. If you're not establishing yourself with your feet and you're using your hands, you're going to get called for those blocks in the back and those holes. That nullified a big game. Now they're looking at a huge first and 20. We'll go one, We'll go first and 20 from the 30-yard line. That puts Hard Northern back in a hole. He's got Hobson all the way on the right side behind him. He's going to throw across the field, and that ball goes off the hands of his intended target, Mason Stewart. Hey, Gilly, I want to, before we end this broadcast, I want to thank the administration here at Waynesville Goshen, Josh Spencer, Nathan Sweeney, uh, Matt Wireman, Josh Zekman up here in the booth. They've treated us so good tonight. Absolutely. And uh, just a fantastic uh, time here at Waynesville Goshen. So we thank all of those good folks. Well, both coaches, I mean, they got us the information that they we did. needed. Yes, they did. You know, Coach Sumner from, from um, Waynesville Goshen and also Coach Cooper, Coach from, yeah. Cooper from Hart Northern. You know, we can't do this without that. Uh, 
coordinating with the coaches and also the school. A big hit there. Big hit there as Wilson. My goodness. And the ball, and the ball popped, popped, out. popped out. And are they saying it was a turnover? The ball popped out. It was a nice pass play across the middle. The ball popped out, and I think they're going to say it stays with Harden Northern. Okay, they're going to say it was down. They're going to say it was down. That was Brody Hipsher. Brody Hipsher got popped really hard. I think that appeared to be Jace Kaufman with the pop right there. It's going to bring up third and 10 from the 40-yard line. 7.09 to go. Clock continues to run. Waynesfield's got two timeouts. Harden Northern has three timeouts left. You, you got know it. what, partner? We can't put this on without sponsors. Oh, absolutely. So Le thank yeah. you to the sponsors. Kenton Moose and Lee's Famous Recipe yep. Chicken, absolutely. For sponsoring WOSN Athletics. There's a little counter play. They try to go up the middle. Nothing going there as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. That was number 22, Cam Frank. We've called his name quite a bit tonight, but that's going to bring up a huge fourth and nine from the 40 with 6.30 to go, Gilly. Yep. And Harden Northern's going to punt the ball away and rely on their defense. And the Tigers are going to send Jace Kaufman back to about the 25-yard line. And there's the punt, and it's a low liner and it's going to squib down towards the 25-yard line, and that's where they'll down it at the 25. So with 6.04 to go, Waynesville Goshen leads 20 to 13, and you got to believe they'd like to go on a six-minute drive here, Gilly, and kill this game altogether. Well, that, you know, sustain a drive and make hard work and burn a couple timeouts in the process. But it's been a dandy, no question about it. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think when, when we looked at the stats and we were prepping for the game and, and we saw those big scores, I really thought to myself, I think this is going to be a low-scoring game just because of the way both teams run the ball and the defensive prowess from both these coaches. And that's exactly – it's just been a fist fight all night. Oh, it has. Coffin will go up there, excuse me, this will be Grant Bredigan up the middle for a gain of maybe two yards. And I think they're okay with that, Gilly, keeping that clock running. And they're going to force Hard Northern to think about those timeouts here with 5.51 to go in the fourth quarter. Win and Hobson on the stop. Caden win. Second and seven from the 28. Yeah, if you're the Bears right now, you've got to be sniffing for that football, and hopefully the home team puts it on the grass. They'll go right side. This is Brady Miller, and he has taken down a gain of about two yards. Nice job there by the Polar Bears stringing it out. Here to be Kyle Sedlock on the stop with Xander Wilson. Going to bring up third and five from the 30 with five minutes to go exactly. We are now under the five minute mark. Big play here for oh, the Polar Bears. Oh, it's a huge play right here. You get a first down here and then Coach yes. Cooper and Harden Northern's gonna have to start thinking about those timeouts. Yes. Coffin flips it back to Grant Bredigan. He busts through the line and he's gonna pick up a first down, but there's a flag. Two flags. Two flags come in and that could be huge in this game as Bredigan had the first down and they're gonna call, let's see what they call. I thought they started to call a block below the waist here, but uh, and that's what they call it. Yeah, yeah, and that goes against Waynesfield Goshen. So both teams committing some mental errors here in the fourth quarter, and that'll back the Tigers up. So a huge break for the Polar Bears as they're trying to get the ball back. I don't think either coach is going to need to go to the barber because they're going to be pulling their hair out yeah. when they take a look at the film, scratching their head. Absolutely. Because these are all correctable errors. They're just yeah. coming at the wrong time. And you know as well as I do, any sport you play is a game of momentum, and penalties have been crucial on both sides of the ball for both teams. So Kaufman hands off to Brady Miller, and Brady Miller goes up the right side, and that's going to bring up fourth down as he stays in bounds. And 
It's going to be a gain of about five yards. So here we go, Gilly. Clock continues to run. We are at the four-minute mark, and it's fourth and ten from the 25. Do you try to draw hard north? Excuse me, fourth and two. With a cadence call Yeah, here. that's exactly what I was thinking, Gilly. At least you go to the line and see if they won't jump. And and you're going to burn 20 seconds off the sure. clock. So here we go, fourth and two from the 38-yard line. And Coach Cooper is going to take a timeout. With 3.42 to go, we'll step aside. You're watching High School Football on WOSN. With 3.42 to go in this game, the Waynesville Goshen Tigers lead the Hard Norman Polar Bears 2013. Danny Holbrook, Darren Gilbert from Waynesville Goshen High School. And Gilly, fourth and two, you're thinking they just go to the line, try to draw them off. Well, he may he may decide right here to uh, punt the ball. And it appears that's what he... And that's exactly what it looks like he's going to do. Jace Kaufman is in punt formation. And the Polar Bears have not yet put anybody back. And so they're going to be content with letting the ball drop behind them. And a nice punt there by Kaufman as it rolls to about the 46-yard line where the Polar Bears will take over. So 334, yeah, this is... <laughs> both, both teams are tired. Yeah, we'll see what happens here, Gilly, and they're going to say it landed at the 44-yard line. I was wrong on that one. First and 10 from the 44, 334 to go. Hard Northern with two timeouts left. Waynesfield has two timeouts left. And you got to remember, Gilly, even if Hard Northern scores, the time, the point afters and the two-point conversions have been shaky at best tonight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, because uh, you know, Hard Northern's going to make a choice if they do score. So the next corner, go for two. Here come the Polar Bears. This is Wilson. He'll keep it himself, and he goes across the line of scrimmage for a gain of about three yards, so a nice pickup on first down. Clock continues to run. That'll bring up first or second and about seven from the 47-yard line. Nice little gain there for the quarterback. Just barreled his way, got as much as he could. So Wilson goes under center. He's got Hobson off to his right side. He's got a receiver to the far left and right. He's going to pitch back to Hobson, and Hobson is taken down in the backfield. My goodness, Landon Porter come out of nowhere. Excuse he's me, had, Layden Porter. He's had a heck of a oh game. Oh, my goodness. What a play by that young man. It's going to bring up third and nine from the 45-yard line, they'll call it. Clock continues to run with 2.40 to go. Here we go. So a huge play here for Waynesville's defense and a bigger play for the hard northern offense. Wilson will go under center. He's going to keep it himself. Goes through the middle, and he's going to be taken down. It'll bring up fourth and about four yards right at midfield, right at the Tiger Paw. So this is it, partner, with 2.17 to go. Hard Northern's going to take a timeout. Uh, third and, yeah, they're going to call it fourth and about five yards to go. So, well, partner, no Buckeye game tomorrow. The Buckeyes are off. You're Still a good one, though, in Madison. <laughs> yeah, they're, you're right. Alabama. And it's nice to see the SEC come up to Big Ten country every now and then. Yeah, I didn't realize the next three series is for the next three years. What, Georgia, Alabama, and somebody else, Ohio State, is going to be playing home and home. The WSN Score app is new and improved. Download the brand new app from your app store so you don't miss any of your favorite team score. The new WSN app replaces the old app. So make sure you download it today and stay up to date on all the scores. Danny Hobart, Darren Gilbert, so happy to bring you this contest tonight. And partner, we've had a dandy. We couldn't have got a better game to broadcast from the, the, the Waynesville Goshen Tigers, Harden Norman Polar Bears, just a spectacular Northwest Central Conference game. Very physical, there's no question about that. Fourth and four for the 50, here we go. Waynesville Goshen gets a stop. They'll get the ball back. And 
That looks like Waynesville is going to take a timeout. No, actually, Coach Cooper Coach is. Coach Cooper's taking the timeout. Gilly, is that his last timeout? I believe that's it. I think that's his last timeout. So he's all in on this play right here. And if they don't get it, you're right. They just put the zero up there. If Hard Northern doesn't get it, Gilly, Waynesville goes and run the ball out. Yeah. Other NWCC games this evening, North Baltimore is at Corey Rawson. Elgin and Ridgemont in Ridgeway tonight. Playing the Comets. And Perry traveled to Upper Santa Valley. So some really good games around the area, especially here in the Northwest Central Conference. It, this is a good conference, Gilly. It doesn't get a lot of recognition, but these, these are good teams, and uh, this conference gets better and better every year. It does get better every year, and the quality of coaching is getting better and better every year. So here we go, fourth and four from the 50. Wilson is in, and now Waynesfield's going to take a timeout. And so it's a real chess match. As I said earlier, Gilly, Elgin is two and Elgin and Hard Northern, are play, or excuse me, Elgin and Richmond are playing tonight. Both of them are undefeated in the league. So uh, basically, and not an elimination game because you're not out of it with one loss. Sure. But it will start, you know, changing the pecking order in the conference. Yep. Sure will. You know what? You get three timeouts, a half. Why leave them on the board? Well, you're exactly right. And Waynesville's got one left. Hard Northern has none. And uh, this is where you've got to be disciplined and focused and execute at a high level, whether you're you know, on defense or on offense. And it's going to be interesting to see what the play call is from on both sides of the football. So here we go, fourth and four from the 50. Wilson will go in the gun. He's got Hobson off to his left. He's going to take the snap. He's going to roll far out left. He's going to throw down the field, and he's got his man, oh, Nolan a Hobson. Beautiful a beautiful strike. Catch. Nolan Hobson picks up the first down, and he goes out of bound. That's the best pass of the night well, by that you young what, man, Xander Wilson. A shot right there by Grant. Reading them in the backfield, and they both got up and patted one another on top of the helmet. Oh boy, what a delivery and a great catch here by Hobson. And not only did he catch it, he tightrope that sideline and got down to about, what, the 21? Is that 31? Excuse yeah. me. They'll, they'll call it first and 10 to the 32. Wilson will go in the gun. He's going to hand the ball off to Hobson. Hobson goes to the middle of that line. And boy, Gilly, you got to have some urgency here. The clock's under two minutes mm -hmm. now, and Harden Northern has no timeouts. Obviously, if they score, they don't want to leave Waynesville Goshen with much time, but you got to score and get an extra point or a two point conversion. Right, 153 to go, and that's where, you know, the quarterback and the, and the head coach have to be on the same page. They'll direct snap it to Nolan Hobson, and he's going to be taken down by that big defensive line and a big time stop by the Tigers. And that clock continues to run. We're at 134, and we'll go third and about six. Here to beat Mr. Bredigan on the stop there, along with Jace Kaufman. This clock is a ticket. We're at 120 and counting. Third and six from the 28. Wilson will go in the gun. He's got a far right drive receiver. He's going to pitch back to Hobson. Hobson looking for a hole. He cuts it back. There goes Nolan Hobson, and he's going to take it into the end zone for a hard oh northern touchdown. Oh, my goodness. The Bears score with 105 to go. Nolan Hobson as he wiggles his way through the line. And the Bears got a decision to make here, Gilly. Do they go for the extra point or do they go for two? That's what I'm sitting here watching. 20 to 19, 105 to go. The kids are looking over at Coach Cooper. They're pointing for the two points. Let's see what they decide to do. Bears are going to kick. There, it looks like they're going to kick the extra point. And Nolan Hobson will be kicking. Or excuse me. Yeah, Nolan Hobson will be kicking 105 to go. And there's a flag on the play. Oh, this could change the whole oh, ordeal. Oh, my Here goodness. Preliminary indication is offsides. Oh, and they've, they've, they've made their decision. They're going to play. They're going to go for two. They're going to go for They're two. They're going to go for the win, Gilly, with, with 105 to go. 
This, or at least the lead. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. You're right. At least the lead. You're absolutely right. So here we go. Coach Cooper calls his guys over, and the play clock, clock continues to run here with 1.05 to go. What a huge difference between three yards and oh, yeah, absolutely. yard and a half. So here we go. <laughs> Xander Wilson will go. Oh, is it? Yeah, I mean, it's quiet. Now it's going to get loud. He'll go under center. He's got Nolan Hobson off to his right. He's going to keep it himself as he takes it into the end zone for the two-point conversion. And the Bears lead 21-20 with 1.05 to go. A huge momentum swing as the hardened Northern Polar Bears convert the two-point conversion, and they lead 21-20 with 1.05 to go. What a gutsy play right there and a gutsy call. But I'll tell you what, the offensive line did a great job. M. Ryan, Caden Gwynn, Bodie Hipscher from his tight end position, River Gwynn, Cam Frank, Wyatt Poor. The guys up front did just enough to allow Mr. Wilson to turn the corner right there. The bootleg yeah. got into the end zone. Xander Wilson and Nolan Hobson have had fantastic games tonight, Gilly. And look, there, there's a minute five left. This game oh, is far from being over. Correct. We've seen the ability of the Tigers to strike quick. So with a minute five to go. We <laughs> well, how big is that timeout that oh, they huge, utilized? Huge. You know, I understand the last one, you know. And Waynesfield still I'm not got a timeout left. Yeah. yeah, I'm not questioning that, that at all. So please don't interpret that. No. But, you know, they called that timeout early, remember? And. That they, they could be sitting with two versus the one. See, I'm curious what what Hard Northern does. You got to believe they're going to beat the ball into the ground. Yeah, I, I would not kick it to Bredigan. <laughs> I would keep it out of his hands. Go second level. Yeah, I, I would squib kick it down the middle. And here goes the kickoff, and they're just going to kick it right right to the up man there. Nice and play. And the Tigers are at the 50-yard line, Gilly, with a minute five to go and a timeout left. Yeah, nice nice play there by Reed. Waitman. Waitman. Yeah, the really? junior. Nice, really? Nice hands on there catching that football at the 50. I guess I don't understand. I, I don't know how, I don't know, giving them the, the ball at the 50-yard line. But, hey, look, I, I'm just up here in the booth, so. They know more than we, we do on scouting reports. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So here we go, Gilly, 105 to go. Tigers have the ball first and 10 at the 50. Kaufman brings him to the line. He's going to pass the ball. He rolls out to the right side. He's going to keep it himself. He's at the 45. He's at the 40. He gets out of bounds. And a nice run by Jace Kaufman. And the Tigers are picking Good up a big chunk. Absolutely. 57 seconds to go. And Jace Kaufman takes it up for another Kenton Moose first down. Good is the timeout right there. Moving the chains. Saving the timeout. What a football game well, we've this, had tonight, you know, Gilly. if you're hard northern, you got to keep the football in the middle of the field. You cannot let the ball go to the boundary where Waynesfield can step out of bounds with it. Coffin's going to put it back come. to Bredigan. Here goes Bredigan. He cuts back to the middle. There goes Grant Bredigan, and he's taken down at about the 28-yard line, and the Tigers are in hurry-up mode. Clock continues to run at 49 seconds. Touchdown saving tackle right there by Caden yeah. Wynn. And there goes the clock. First and 10 from the 28-yard line. Coffin goes under center. He's going to roll out. He's looking to throw the ball. He's going to keep it himself, and he's going to be taken down, and that's a big play by oh, Hard Northern. That's big a hit. big play, and the Tigers better unpack that, and they'll take the timeout. Good call by uh, the coaching staff for Waynesville Goshen. Yeah, took a sack right there. It's better than an interception, but give the Polar Bears credit coming up there and stuffing that rollout. So 33 seconds to go. Harden Northern with a 21-20 lead. He's we, proved he can throw the football. Cheerleaders throwing t-shirts in the crowd. You, moly. <laughs> Look at the arms on them. <laughs> Having a great How time. How many of them tonight. cheerleaders are softball girls? <laughs> they are throwing cheerleaders Thank like Thank goodness crazy. to the people down in front of us standing up for a t-shirt. <laughs> We'd have got hit. Boy, those were coming like fastballs, Gilly. Yeah. I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, as much as I like t-shirts. <laughs> Holy uh, moly. 
<laughs> we had a great no, night here. But, but, you know, Waynesfield's proven that they can throw the football. And not only can he do that, he can also roll out with it with his legs. Let's see what they've got. Here we go. Drew up here. Second and 12 from the 30. Kaufman takes the snap. He's going to fake the handoff. He's going to roll to the right side. He's looking to throw the ball. He's going to throw it downfield. And he's got his man. A reception made at about the 15-yard line. And they've got to hurry. That reception was made by number nine, Tyler Wireman, who's had a fantastic game. And he's going to spike the ball down. And a nice job. I'll Tyler Wireman's played a great game tonight. He, he threw a nice ball there. But I'm going to give a little credit to Kyle Sedlak. Kyler said, like, because if he does not tackle him, right, he takes that's him a touchdown. Yeah. He made sure he got his arms around him and grappled him to the ground. Yeah, he did get the completion. Yes, they did get the first down. But if he breaks away, it's touchdown. That'll bring up second and about eight is what they're calling it. Second and ten, really, from the 16. You got to believe he's got to throw the football, partner. Yeah, 22 seconds to go here. He's going to keep it himself. He's looking to throw the ball down the field. He's rolling out to his right. He's got to get out of bounds, and he does. And, and a nice move there. I, I like what they're doing here, giving him options, and uh, there's 16 seconds to go. Well, they're bringing, they're, they're filling in that right side with, with different options, but Hard Northern, to their credit, did a really good job defending it where Jace uh, had Coffin, no yeah. choice. He had no choice but to get as much as he could and get out of bounds. So now we're at 16 seconds, Gilly. Nothing can go to the middle of the field. You've got to keep everything on the boundaries. You have to to give yourself a chance oh, to get you, out of bounds. You mean if you're Waynesfield? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. If you're yeah. hard northern, you do not want the ball to go to the boundaries. You want that thing into the middle of the field. Everybody, all 11 white jerseys have to be on the same page, just like the blue do offensively. Coffin's going to roll out. He's trying to get around the left side. He's looking for anybody, and he's got his man out there, and it's incomplete, and that'll stop the clock with nine seconds to go. Appeared to be Dylan Bacon on Boy, the coverage. Gilly, when you roll to the far side, you really take a lot of time up there. That, that took a lot of time there, but I like the play concept. They had a guy open and a nice play by the hard Northern defense. Well, the big thing is if you're going to roll that way, you've really got to, if you're a right-handed quarterback, you got to make sure you get your shoulders parallel to that line of scrimmage or that ball's going to come out funny. So nine seconds to go. This is fourth and 12, Gilly. This is it. This is the play of the game here. For the Tigers. Yeah, unless they get it to the six for a first down. But you've got to get up and hurry up on the line. Right. And Kaufman scrambles. He's looking for anybody, trying to avoid the rush. He's going to roll back to the right. He's going to heave it up. It's going towards the end zone, and it's picked off, and that'll do it. Harden Northern has come into Waynesfield, and they get one, a 21-20 win over the Waynesfield Goshen Tigers. What a game, Gilly. What a game. Your thoughts on the Harden Northern victory. Well, there's just a gutsy effort by both ball clubs. You know, it's tough to see both teams lose like this because they laid everything they had on the line. Waynesfield coming back from three quarters last week, taking a tough one on the chin, then coming in with a much improved Hard Northern team. And Hard Northern coming over here to Waynesfield and getting one on the, the road. They still remained undefeated. Yeah, that was going to Wayne, say. Waynesfield is not out of it yet. No, they but they, they need some luck, and they can get it, but, you know, they've got to concentrate. They can't afford any more slip-ups, and I think, you know what, two losses in the league could still get them into the playoffs, but I know that the league championship was something that they were after, you know, continue to grow sure. and continue to build, and if you're hard northern – what a great win on the road, and that's what the, the kids are doing right now with Coach Cooper. This is a group that keeps growing and getting together. Great Division Seven football game, partner. Yeah, that'll do it. The final score from Hard Northern or from Waynesville Goshen High School: the Hard Northern Polar Bears 21, Waynesville Goshen 20. What a great high school football game for Jacob Neal, Darren Gilbert. I'm Danny Hobrick saying we'll see you next week. You've been watching high school football on WOSN.